Christmas mean to you? What does Christmas really mean to you? Um, what have you, what have you seen, or what's what's what makes Christmas that important to you? So this morning we are going to be discussing that. But before we go right now, we're going to be um we'll go on a short musical break. Um, I feel like we have a lot of songs. So I'm trying to see. Oh yeah, so let me let me open the show this morning with my song is love because because of God's love he sent Christ to us. So this morning we'll be having is love by Anu Adedere. Yes. So this morning we'll be watching or be listening to my song is love by Anu Adedere. Hi, good morning, my people. How are we doing? How are we doing? How are we doing? Yes, so this morning we're listening to... Yes, hi, people. Hi, Mr. Mon Sunday. Merry Christmas, Pastor Lumi Day. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. So this morning we'll be talking... Um, about what does Christmas mean to to you, and we'll be reviewing the entire story of Christmas, and that is um, in Matthew chapter one and chapter two, and we'll be talking about um, also looking at Luke chapter one and two. That's where we have both Christmas stories. So yes, we're gonna go live on Instagram right now and see. I'm not too sure why I cannot view. Um, what's i don't know why we cannot hear the music though right now but yes so this morning we'll be looking at what does christmas mean to you um if you tune in to amen radio so let me show you this is the app this is the app for amen radio uh so this is amen radio so that's what is playing right now, my song. So for those that are not on um, Amen Radio, just go to your app store. Um, good morning, Auntie Sarah. So go, go on um, the app store and download Amen Radio. See? Amen Radio. If I'm very sure. Uh, why are you saying hello right there? That's true. <laughs> but yeah, so you go straight to Amen Radio. I don't know why it's showing a blur. Um, so you go on Emma Radio and you get your, um, so right now that's what's playing on Amen Radio. So you can, instead of even going live, yeah, I want to just make sure that this is super clear. Yeah, so yeah, we have a clearer picture. Yes, so today. Thank you very much, Ma. Thank you very much, and Sarah. So that was playing right now on Amen Radio. We'll be going on Instagram Live once we start the show, though. So that's my song. So if you don't have his love, you should go download it. It's love by Anwade Jure. So just Google Anwade Jure is love, and you get different links to it. And you can check on my Instagram or my Facebook page also. You see different links to download the song or buy the song. Yes, it's on iTunes, it's on Spotify, it's on Amazon Music, it's on Google Play Music. So you can download it everywhere. Yes, so thank you for everybody that's here right now. I can see Mr. Nero, Pastor Lemon, Shetaiwo. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Long time. It's been years I've seen you. How's your family, sir? Um, yeah, we have Tosi and Remo. Hi, Tosi. Yes, yeah, so this morning, um, we'll be talking about what does Christmas mean to you. Once we're done, we're on a music break right now on the radio station. So once we're done, then we're going to come back and start talking about it. So it's just a quick um, study of what Christmas really means to me.
Thank you, my amen, Grandma Tiara. God bless you, my yes, God. Thank you very much. Sorry, my people. So, welcome back, my people. This is Anu Adejiri. And if you are just... Sorry, I have a very bad cold. <laughs> if you're just tuning in, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever part of the world you are in, this is Live Vibes with Anu. I said Live Vibes. <laughs> Life matters with Anu Adejiri. And if you're tuning to us for the first time, this is just a platform. with live right now on Amen Radio. So if you are, um, if you have your internet working perfect for you, you should go live on Amen Radio and watch us. And if you want to like watch us live, like see what we're doing, you should come on Instagram and Facebook live. You will not want to miss this. So this morning, um, we'll be discussing what does Christmas mean to you? And I don't know, um, can someone just tell me, I don't, from, from our viewers, like watching live on Facebook or on Instagram right now, what does Christmas really mean to you? If anyone can just tell me in like one to three minutes, um, what does Christmas mean? Because a lot of times we see Christmas as the time for us to go see family, the time that we go, um, eat, the time that we go from one party to the other, the time where we try to enjoy and go eat different kind of, you know, different delicacy for different people. And um, everybody has their favorite auntie and uncle that bring special gifts for them for Christmas. Everybody has the way they are already, ah, this, my hair has to be like this for Christmas. This, my, my, my hearings have to be this. I have to go shopping. I have to go do this new thing. And I noticed that that's what we think of year in, year out about Christmas. Year in, year out, we see that Christmas has become a time for partying and a time for um, relaxation of some sort for most people. But right now, I want to view the story of Christmas and which starts from Matthew chapter 1. Um, if we remember the story of how Mary and Joseph, um, I just, I'll just do a quick read. Um, the body of Jesus starts from Matthew chapter one from verse 18. It says, now the body of Jesus Christ happened this way. After his mother, Mary was engaged to Joseph before they came together. She was found with child by the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, had in mind to divorce her privately. But while he thought of these things, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for he who is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Um, verse 22, now all this occurred to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet, saying... A virgin shall, and that's in Isaiah, that's um, when, when Isaiah gave that prophecy was in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Yes, so Isaiah 7 verse 14 was the one that made us know um, what um, the story of Mary and Jesus was all about. So that was when Isaiah said that a, a virgin will give birth to a child through the conception. Yeah, so if we have a, a notes, we can just jot it down. It's in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. That's when the prophecy had already come before the birth of Jesus. And have you, have you noticed that most times when God is going to do something really big and mighty, he always sends the message way before. So he always sends his prophets to tell us what he wants to do before time so it doesn't just come to us without us knowing what exactly god is going to do or what exactly god has in mind in the real sense of it so most times we see that um when god is planning something very big he sends his prophet and his prophet delivers the message before time to us so in verse 23 it said a virgin shall be with child and bear a son and they shall call him emmanuel which means god with us so that's where the song um i think it's done when um emmanuel god with us yes so that's the meaning of emmanuel 
Then Joseph, being awakened from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and remained with his wife and did not know her until she had given birth to his first son and he called his name Jesus. So I, I want to look at it this way. So let me imagine that Mary was like in 2017 and Joseph was in 2017 too. And you as a guy, I want, I want to ask our guys, and I'm also talking to those that are on our Facebook and Instagram live. So let me imagine that Joseph was your brother and Mary was probably to so these ladies, was your sister, yeah? And this happened. What would you advise your brother to do? Like I'm imagining, <laughs> I'm imagining how the 21st century Joseph would be like, ah, oh more, let me just run away. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot do this. And that, that story, we always curve the story around Mary a lot. Oh, Mary, did you know? Mary this, Mary that. But today, I want to review Christmas in the light of the life of Joseph. And why am I reviewing the life of Joseph? Because I, I sat down and, and studied that entire book last night. And I looked at it and I said, this man is an example to a lot of men. The man called Joseph. He is a great example. And why? Now, let, let's look at this pattern. This is the pattern I drew out. Um, Mary was received the Holy Spirit and had a baby, right? So the Holy Spirit put a baby in Mary. We already know that. Now, the person she was betrothed to was Joseph. And Joseph was the guy that, um, I want to imagine it was a, like if it was an everyday Christian, so it was. If I'm, I'm looking at Joseph in 21st century now, and if Joseph was, um, it was probably the evangelical team leader in church. He always made sure everything was going on fine in church. Mary was probably in the choir, and she was doing everything right, and everything was going good for her, and everything was smooth. But she was pregnant, and Joseph found out now. If you were to be Joseph or your brother were to be Joseph, you probably tell him to run away. But that's what the qualities I saw in Joseph, which the things that Christmas really means to me. One of the qualities was he was a just man. He was a just man. Joseph was a man that lived an exemplary life. Even the Bible said he was a just man. And if you look at his life, you know that he's not that, that random guy that would just talk anyhow to women, or when he's angry, be rash at women, or when he things are not going his way, he shouts at women or beats up women. No, the scripture stated that he was a just man. Now, this is my 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 take about Christmas to our men. Be like Joseph, being a just man, a good man, a man of integrity, a man that, you know, another thing they said Joseph did was he wanted to divorce her privately. So he did not want to spread her dirty linen in public or make people know that, oh, this is what you have done. I'm going to do this to you. No, he wanted to do it very private. He wanted to make sure everyone did not know what was going on with her. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Joseph was a man. He was just. He had integrity. He loved God. Like, like I, I'm just imagining a 21st century brother. So he was, he was fervent in the things of the Lord. He was open. He was dedicated. Everything he did was like, um, I love God. I am going to obey him. But because this woman is someone I love, and that's why love is a very powerful weapon. Like love is a powerful word. It's not just by saying, I love you. It's about you acting it. Love is not just by the words. Love is by the actions. So he, exempl he, he exemplified himself or made himself an example by making sure that Mary was not put to shame. And he made sure he did that. Mary was not put to shame. So what Joseph did was to privately want to say, you know what, babe, I know that we've been together for the past seven years, but um, this is what I have to do. I have to leave you because of these things. But look at the life of Joseph. He also was 
obedient. Because the scripture said that the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Now, you know that this is a man that has an obedient heart. Joseph was a man that had an obedient heart. He was someone that respected the words and the laws of the Lord. And by doing that, Joseph obeyed what the angel had told him, even when it didn't seem good in court. And that's what happens to a lot of us. Sometimes God will be the one that will arrange some things together. God will be the one that will put us in some positions that we will not like in court. Like if one a lady that you've been betrothed to or you've been in courtship with for years... And you guys have not, have not met. And she just comes to tell you and say, Ah, brother, brother Shola, I am sorry I'm pregnant. Ah, brother Shola. <laughs> brother Shola will just pack his bag and run away. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you feel like, what am I doing here? Why should it be me? And that's what a lot of times happens to us. God puts us in positions where he wants us to be better and bigger and more mature in what is handling unto us. So even when that, that thing is not looking so good, hold on to God's word. And that's what Christmas meant to me. The birth of Jesus was from a man that had integrity, a good man, a man that did not want to publicly um, put to shame the person he loves. So he didn't just say he loves Mary. He acted in the way he wanted to be, to, 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 um, so his actions merge with his words. So he didn't just say, ah, oh, Mary, I love you. You're the love of my life. He said, Mary, I am sorry this is happening, but I really need, and one thing I really need to do is to make sure that we're not together. I have to do that for our sake. And if it were to be you, you were married, you'll be like, we've been together for so many years. What? Blah, 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 blah. And he went to sleep. Now, if I were to be married, probably I'll just go back to my room and get angry or whatever. But one thing Mary did or one thing the Lord did was to make sure that this guy called Joseph, as much as I love him, I have to go and meet him because you cannot break my daughter's heart. Brothers. <laughs> So yes, it's a love story. <laughs> it's a story about love. It's a story about the Christmas story to me is a story about you not just saying those words that oh I, I, I appreciate you no, know, but my actions back in what I've done. Now, after the angel of the Lord has spoken to him, now if probably Mary went to her room and was doing a book as she was praying in tongues, doing everything and make sure that uh, this brother must not go. God is the one that has put this brother in my life, and this is what the Lord has even done and put inside me. So none of you must go. And when Joseph got to his room, being a fervent brother too that he, he, he has been. So I imagining a brother that also is fervent to the Lord and he gets to um the house and sleeps and he's like you know what i can't even deal with this today like i can't deal with this how can someone that i did not even have anything to do with just tell me she's pregnant i can't deal with this and he goes to bed and the and the angel of the lord spoke to him this is what this 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 and this is this is my son i put inside my daughter and i need you to be the father so when when that happened joseph would be like well, since the Lord has spoken to me, since the Lord has told me this is what to do, since the Lord has said this is how it's going to happen, then let me obey. What does Christmas mean to you? Christmas is about obedience. You don't, don't just, um, don't just um, live life as you go. To be very sincere. Christmas is about obedience. So not just by words, but by your actions, being obedient to God. That's what Christmas is about. So if you look at it again, when the angel appeared to Joseph, there's a, there's a part where I see a man that always had a constant relationship with God. So in this Christmas, I want you to have that constant relationship with God. Where when the angel of the Lord speaks to you, you are able to back it up with his word and know that this is the Lord speaking to me. 
not just that oh someone told me this someone told me that no you know this is the voice of the lord speaking to me why because this is not the first time i am hearing his word so he understood that okay the angel has spoken to me and one good thing he did is he was obedient so not just hearing the word of God or not just saying that, oh, I have heard you, God, or not just saying that, oh, this is what, Lord. no, one thing Joseph did was he was obedient after hearing what the angel has told him. So what is that thing that God has told you in this past year and you've been struggling with? Now it's time to be obedient. A lot of times when God gives us responsibilities, he knows that we will have the capacity to handle them because he will send his angel to give us a guide. He will send his Holy Spirit to give us a guide. So a lot of times when you see yourself in that situation where you can't really handle it because you feel that this is not God, it must be the devil. Sometimes it's God. He just needs to strengthen and put you up together. So the life of Joseph was a life of love, a life of obedience. And that is what Christmas should mean to you. So Christmas should not just be about you um, hanging out with your cousins, you going from one over and bed to the other. It should be a life of you being obedient and you expressing love. Who else made that Christmas story beautiful for me? The three wise men. Oh, oh, oh. I love me some three wise men. Now, when you look at things like this, I, I, I sit down and I'm saying, the three wise men, nobody called them on the phone like, hello, yeah, my, my, my cousin just gave birth. Can you deliver? DHL, can you deliver? No. They saw the star. And a lot of us are stars. And I pray that today, in the name of Jesus, in the name that's above every other name, I pray that your star will not go dim in Jesus' name. I pray that your star will not go dim in Jesus' name. That men and women from far and near will look for you, see your star, and bring gifts unto you. I pray that the revelational power of the Most High, the Lord that has made you see Christmas, the Lord that has made you see the end of 2017, will make your star shine so bright that men will come from far and wide to bring gifts unto you, to bring contracts unto you, to bring business unto you in Jesus' name. Now the three wise men, they came, brought gifts to Jesus. That's the way in chapter 2 of Matthew. Matthew chapter 2 verse 3 to 4. Jesus' star was not eating. And I pray that the right set of people will bring you gifts this year. Before the end of this year, people that God has already said they are going to bring gifts to your life will bring gifts unto you in the name of Jesus. Now, when the three wise men were looking for like this star, they saw the star, they were following it. Herod was troubled. And, and, and let's look at chapter 2. Um, let's see from verse 1. Uh, Matthew chapter 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, the king, wise men came from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Men will worship you. I'm not saying that. <laughs> they, they worship you by bringing you gifts. They worship you and they worship the God in you. Men will worship the God in you. Yes. So they will not worship in the sense that they will see you and they will see that star. They will see that star and say, this is the son of God. And this is the person I'm going to bring this gift for. So whoever is holding on to your blessing right now, we pray that the heavens open and make the person remember you today in jesus name now in verse 3 when Herod the king had these things he was troubled and all of jerusalem with him and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes and people together i want to stop there now when Herod was troubled guess what he did he didn't just get um undo the trouble alone Herod made sure he went to gather people and that's what happens to a lot of people when they're in, it's just like <laughs> when someone is evil, they don't want to do it alone. They gather other people. 
they make sure that they're not the only one in this business. They make sure they're not the only one that is going to put things together. They make sure they go out of their way to gather other people that want to discredit, that want to make sure that, that person's life is destroyed. But because of the name that's above every other name, anyone that plots and gathers anything against your life, they'll be the one that will work against each other in Jesus' name. Herod did not know who he was dealing with. I, he did not know. He had no idea who Jesus was. He had no idea who the son of God was. He had no idea who, who the son of God was. Because if he did, he wouldn't have tried what he did. At all. He wouldn't have. He probably would have thought, Oh, is it not, um, <laughs> is it not just an ordinary baby? But no. Herod had no idea who he was dealing with. So when, when Herod came, he gathered the scribes, he this, he that, he, he kind of them together and said, ah, you know what, let's, let's make sure that um, these people are destroyed. Let's make sure that these people don't, don't, don't make it. And what did Herod do? Herod had um, sought the wise men. Now, let, let, me, let, me, let me point out another thing that Herod did. When you are progressing in life, there are so many errors around you. When you are progressing in life, when um, when things are working together for your good, when things are are making sense, the devil will send people like Herod. The de yes, yes, I'm very sure what I'm saying. The devil will send people like like Herod, people that will want to play anky panky. People that want to do anyhow. Yes. People like that, the devil will send your way. But why? Because of your star. Because of that star. And I pray that your star will not go dim in Jesus' name. So when the three wise men, and, and, and if we continue to read, he said, then in verse 7, he said, then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, it was not three wise men. I don't know why we got three wise men. No. This is all this book of Bible story. It's the wise men. They don't say any number. Called the wise men, carefully inquired of them what time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again, so I can come and worship him. And you know the life of what I saw in the life of the wise men. They were discerning. So in, in before the end of this year, Pray for discernment. In 2018, pray for discernment. The three wise men knew that Herod was not planning anything good. Let's, let's tell us. Because if you notice, even when the angel, after the angel had gone to meet the three, the wise men, we're so used to saying the three wise men. When, when the angel had gone to meet the wise men, they went not just because, um, he, how do we put it? Not just because he had um, probably tried to like talk to them all. They went to meet Herod. Herod called for them. They went to meet him. But they were discerning. Be discerning in all you do. When you meet someone. When you're working with someone. When you know this person. Mm, the Holy Spirit in you will just give you that chill. And when the person is saying, Ah, sister, don't worry. When 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 I get that when you when you get that contract, just call me or you yeah, just call me. Ah, okay, no problem. Ah, yes, no problem, ma. No problem, sir. I will call you. But you know the Holy Spirit has warned you that don't go back to that place. So let's not be sentimental and go back. Don't. So the wise men. After they had gotten to Jesus, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with excitement and they came into the house. They saw the young child in Mary's mother and fell down and worshipped him. Humility. Because they understood the essence of that star. They understood the essence of the star. Now, in verse um, 12, after they had presented gifts, and that's one thing about Christmas. So what a Christmas means to me, Christmas means giving. They didn't come empty-handed. So don't come empty-handed before Jesus. When you're going to church, when you're giving people, you do, you, it's not just money. You give time, you give your energy, you give your commitment, you give your love. So it's not just 
money. But these people came because they knew the importance of the star they saw. So they didn't just bring any gifts. So when you're coming to meet the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, don't just go before Jesus and bring any gifts. No, Jesus deserves your best. Jesus deserves your best. So they brought the best of the best, which was gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, and this was the link I saw with it. So, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? So, God gave us Jesus. Jesus was born to Mary because of us. So, we are supposed to give God our life, our time, our resources, our energy, our everything. You should give God. Don't just be an everyday Christian. Don't just be someone that will just go be in and out without a purpose for what he wants to do for God. Don't be that kind of Christian. Give your best to God. What Christmas means is give. Give and it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. So it's not enough that you go and eat party rice, go and eat party this, do this, do that. No, it's not enough. One thing you should know is that you should give unto God. So this Christmas, give. Give unto people that you know they don't have enough. Give unto people that you know that they're, they don't have it in court. Give unto people that Ha, like the less privileged people that i don't have clothes and you have a lot of clothes give give your time to people that will need it so the three wise men brought gifts gave unto jesus worship them then they were warned in the dream so they were not just ordinary men that were not that were not obedient men the three wise men were not oh we have ended um instagram live so we have to go back live sorry just one minute yeah we're well, sorry to our instagram folk the the phone scrambled up the wise men in verse 12 but being warmed warned in a dream they should not return to Herod, and they return to their own country by another route that's wisdom that's obedience that's people that understand. So if we look at it from Joseph to the three wise men, one thing is sure, obedience. Obedience. To obey is better than sacrifice and to act in the fat of rams. Same thing, if you remember the story of Saul, God said, kill the entire Amalekites. What did he do? He spared Agag. And he said, oh, I wanted to sacrifice to the Lord. No, obey. Even when it's not convenient, you don't know, maybe God is just trying to bring out the best in you. And that's what he always does. He sees the best in you every time, every day. Now, they obeyed and they followed instruction. Now, this is another part where it's, it amazes me, the life of Joseph. Is that he constantly lived a life of obedience, but he constantly understood the old, the, the the message of God. So the, and now they departed, and the angel of God appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, "Arise, take the young child and his mother, and escape to Egypt, and stay there while I bring you word." So he was discerning; he understood what the Lord was telling him. How many times has the angel of the Lord? How many times has the Holy Spirit told you things this year, last year, next year? Things that the Holy Spirit has told you, and you feel like it's not logical; it doesn't make sense. It don't, I don't think it's, it's, um, I don't think it's for me. A lot of times we've done that. You know, it's like God is just trying to give us a pattern of some sort to make sure that we are obeying him. But what do we do? We use our head knowledge. Oh uh, no, I don't think it's God. I don't think it's the one that's doing these things. I think it's just me think overthinking. No. 
Be discerning. Even when you're so confused, there are times when I, what I do is that when God tells me something and I'm kind of confused about it, I have met people that are more mature than me and I go and meet them. This is what the Lord has told me. Um, or I just tell them, please help me pray about this area of life. I just need to hear what God is telling you. And God always confirms his word. So he arose and took the young child and his mother. So discernment in 2018, let's be, let's let's make sure that our our spiritual antennas are on fleek. <laughs> are on fleek. They are, they are, they are like this. They are fast. So we can discern. We can know what God is saying. And this is not the first time God is speaking to Joseph. So we know that Joseph was a man that is obedient. He loves and also he. He what? He listens to what God says. He doesn't think of what or what or this or that. No, he listens. So this Christmas, one thing you should learn is listen. Listen. When he arose, he took the and okay, in verse 15 he said, and he remained there until the death of Herod to fulfill what the Lord has spoken. God is going to do everything he promised. Oh, my brothers, my sisters, God is going to do it. I don't know how long you've been waiting. I don't know how much you've been searching. I don't know how much you've been holding on to God's word. He is going to do everything he has promised. Just hold on to God. He said he held on to fulfill what the Lord has spoken through the prophet. Out of Egypt, I have called my son. So know that everything God has written in his book about you, about me, is going to bring to pass. Just trust him and do your part. Follow his will. Follow his direction and do your part. There is nothing too much for God to do. Oh my, there isn't. Follow his part. Follow his will. Don't overthink about it. Don't overcalculate about it. Don't, don't overdrive it. Just obey. And everything he has written in his book, he will bring to pass. Then another Herod, then Herod, when he saw he had been tricked by the wise men, are you listening? Was utterly furious and sent forth and killed all the male children. So know that God will not watch evil to happen to you. See what he did. He had already told Joseph before time to leave Egypt. So in 2018, I pray that the... And we, and, we have how many days to the end of 2017? Today is 27. So we have four more days. The four more days remaining and the year 2018, I pray that the protection of the Lord will be upon your life. And I pray that you'll be able to listen to what God is actually saying to you in this time. So you don't just make decisions out of your head knowledge in Jesus' name. You know, God just saved his son. By making sure that he placed his son in the hands of a man of integrity, Joseph. A man that obeyed, a just man. A man that loved, not just by words, but also by action. And that was how Jesus' life was spared. So please, let's always listen. Let's always listen to what God is saying to us. Every time. Always listen. Always understand it. Always know what God is saying to you. He said from two years under, he told them to kill them and he fulfilled what Jeremiah had said. So like we said, God is going to do everything he has spoken. Because you're a great child, because you're a great son and daughter of God. Know that as children of God, everything God has put together for your life is going to bring to pass. Know that. Now, but when Joseph was dead, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream again to Joseph. Saying, Arise, take the young child and go into the land of Israel, for those who sought the li child's life are dead. In the name of Jesus, anyone seeking your life in this year 2017, in the year 2018, they will die. In the name of Jesus. <sighs> See what happened. If Aaron were to be just sincere, but no, the scripture has to be fulfilled. It is just like. You know, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, God had in his heart. It was God. So there are times when you're going through something and it is God that's making you pass through those things. You have to understand it. 
that let me pass through this thing as God is making me pass through it. It's not, it was no witch. It was no wizard. It was God that allowed him pass through it. He was God. And see, and he rose, took the child and his mother and came to the land of Israel. But when he had the Achilles resigned in Judea instead of his father, Pharaoh, Herod, he was afraid to go. Never the land being born by God, he withdrew to the region of Galilee. He went and lived there. So there are times God will give you some warnings. There are times God will give you some instructions. Make sure you obey them. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth. And that was where the prophet had spoken. Because it shall be called a Nazarene. So everything the prophet, has, prophet has, Isaiah, prophet Jeremiah had spoken before time. God brought it to pass through the life of Joseph. Through the life of Joseph. Now, if we look at Luke, the the the, the account of Luke, I want to look at the account of Luke about the birth of Jesus. It said in Luke chapter 2, in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, the entire inhabited heart. Should we tax this taxation was first made when Acunius was governor of Syria and everyone went to his city and was taxed. Um, so this was talking about this account of the shepherds. The one in Matthew was talking about the account of the wise men. This is the account of the shepherds. If you remember that song, while shepherds watch their flocks by night all seated on the ground, the angel of the Lord came down and glory shone around. It's an im. So, yes. And that was another account of um, the birth of Jesus in Luke. It said, so Joseph also departed from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to the city of David called Bethlehem in Judea because he was of the house of the lineage of David um, to be taxed with Mary's betrothed wife who was with child. So while they were there, the day came to give, to give birth and she gave birth to her firstborn was wrapped in strips of clothes and laid in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So the shepherds and the angels and in the same area, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And then an angel appeared and said, glory to the Lord. The glory of the Lord shone around. We're trying to, um, yes, because we have just 15 more minutes. And he said, but the angel said to them, do not fear, for I will bring you great news of joy, which will be to all people. I pray that in this season, the Lord will bring great news of joy into your life in Jesus' name. The Lord will bring greetings of joy, blessings of joy, blessings that will surpass your head knowledge, that you will say, ah, it just remains four days. So yes, I tell people, we are still in 2017. I'm not rushing out here because there is still something God has planned for me in these four days. Don't, don't be carried away by what the economy is saying. God is bringing the blessings to your doorstep. The, 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 the shepherds didn't go and look for him. No, the angel of the Lord God the, brought the good news to him. So I pray that in this season, the Lord will send his angels to bring good news into your life and to your family in Jesus' name. For unto us, for unto you is born this, this day in the city of David, the Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in strips of cloth lying in the manger, and the, there were hosts of heaven singing out, glory to the Lord in the highest peace on earth. And immediately, see again, the angels in the Luke account, the angels were obedient. They went away from them. And he said, let us go now to Bethlehem and see what has happened. The Lord has made known to us. So there are times when God will make things known unto you and you have to take action. You have to obey. You have to do that thing he has called you to do at that moment. So they came Orin and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And, um, and when they had seen him and made widely known the word, was told to them concerning the child and all those who heard it marveled at what the shepherds told them but mary kept all these things and put them in her heart and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising god because of the things they had seen and they had heard as it had been told to them now if we look at both accounts and 
today we're looking at what does Christmas mean to you? We've seen Christmas as a season that we should obey. We should love. We look at the Matthew account of the birth of Jesus. We look at the Luke account of the birth of Jesus. One thing stood out, obedience. And if you look at the end of that chapter 2 of Luke, it says um, about the account of the story of Jesus. It says the shepherds went and spread the word. So I pray that God will raise people like the shepherd, that will spread the good news of your life, that will meet other people in Jesus' name. You know, it's very important that we obey God when he tells us to do something. It's very important. No matter who you are, no matter where you're from, make sure that you obey what God has said unto you. Don't just live a life that will not make God happy. No. Make sure, and this is to everybody, make sure that in this season, number one, what did we learn about Joseph? He had a discerning spirit. Number two, he obeyed God. Number three, he was, he didn't just say he loved Mary. He acted because that's definition of love. Love is given. Love is forgiven. Love is, you know, you know, let, let's, if we say the, the attributes of love in, in the book of, um, if you look at the attributes of love, love is given. Love does not, love does not seek to, um, you do something to someone today. Love doesn't look at that. I think that's in the book of um, Galatians. I'm sorry. Yes. So love is not a feeling. Love is a person. God is love. He has faith, but he is love. Love is a spiritual force, and along with the other spiritual forces, the fruit of the recreated human spirit abides in every born again Christian believer by the holy spirit the force of compassion that is love you know in um in galatians chapter 5 verse 6 it said for in christ jesus neither circumcision or circumcised means anything but faith which works through love it does yes love doesn't seek to gain anything I am doing this thing to you because I love you. So I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to go back and say, ah, see what you did to me. Love, no. That's one thing. You shall love your neighbors. That is not even where I want to even look at. You know, lo love, love. For God so loved the world that he gave. Love is given. So don't just go in this season of the of Christmas, of this new year, and not give. Give. Forgive. I know people have hurt you. In the last 361 days, people have hurt you. People have done things that will make you feel like, you know what, I will not let this person go. I will not do this to this person. But love doesn't do that. Love looks at me, looks at you. Love says, I am going to forgive this person. Irrespective of what they have done to you in the last 361 days, I am beseeching you, brethren, love, 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 love. It's very important that you love. You love, you love. It is very, very important. Beloved, let us love one, love one another, for love is of God, and anyone who loves is born of God and knoweth God. He that knoweth, knoweth not God, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. That's First John four seven and eight. So it's very important you love. Yes, people have hurt. People have done so many things. They've been immature. They've, they've, they've gone over the top. Some people, <laughs> some people have behaved like a man. Yes, they have plotted against you, but you see them and you just love, because God will fight for you just like He did for Mordecai. God, did, Mordecai did not do anything. God saw that this man is just just. Is right. What is what he is doing? So love is very important. 
What else did we learn from the story? We learned that you have to be discerning. You, you have to be discerning the spirit. So look at it. The angels, the, um, the, the wise men and Joseph, they were discerning. They knew what God was saying part time and they obeyed him. If not, we would have been saying a different story now. So be willing to obey. Be willing to know what God is saying and obey him. Don't just be that Christian that only will do things when it's convenient for you. No. Don't just be that kind of person. Obey even when it's not convenient. And like we said earlier, there are times when God will put responsibilities to us. Like I said in the beginning, if your brother were to be Joseph, I'm sure that you would have probably sent him abroad. Because you don't want him to... Uh, you should nothing happen now. How, how will someone now come and say the Holy Spirit impregnated you for what? But what did Joseph do? He listened to what the angel said. And he stood by her. Now some of us have been in relationships where your partners do things to you that will hurt you. Or your partners or, your, or, or even in marriages where your partner will do things to you that you feel like this is not worth it. <laughs> Let me tell you this good news. The good news is this. You have to forgive and let go. You have to love. You have to love that person like Christ loves you. You have to love. And you know the, 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 the good thing about all these things? Is that when you love that partner, even when the person hurts you, you're just doing how Christ did to us. While you were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it's not your Christianity. It's not by your Christianity. Yo. It's not your Christianity that gave us salvation. No. no. It was, it's not your Christianity at all, at all. It is the love that God gave to us. Now, I, I, want to, I want to read 1 Corinthians 13 to you. It says, Yet I show you a more excellent way. If I speak with tongues of men and of angels, and I have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. So it's just making noise. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mystery and all knowledge, and if I have faith, all faith so that I can move mountains, and I have not love, I am nothing. If I have all my goods to feed the poor and I give my body to the bond and I have not love, it profits nothing. So even when you are going to help people, what is in your heart? Is it love or just you trying to show off? Love suffers long and is kind. Love envies not. Love flaunts not itself and is not puffed up. Does not behave itself improperly. Seeks not its own is not easily provoked, thinks no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. That is what love does. So it's not enough, my people. It's not enough for you to just say you love someone with your mouth. If these things you're still doing them, and this is First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse four. From verse four, I need to lead to the entire book um, of um, of First Corinthians. I I know this study is beautiful. In verse eight, love never fails, but if there are prophecies, they shall fail; if there are tongues, they shall cease; and if there was knowledge, they will vanish. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect comes, then that which is imperfect shall pass away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child and I taught as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see as through a glass dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as I, am, I also am now, I'm known. So now I buy faith, hope. And love these three but the greatest of this is love so my people follow after love be obedient be discerning 2018 be the child of god god will be proud of so today 
Um, I hope that we have learned a lot. For those um, that c joined us later, I would say that you go on Facebook. Um, I'm hoping that um, we'll go bigger and probably get camera so that we can upload these videos onto YouTube also and put it on my YouTube channel. So my YouTube channel is at Anu Adedere. You can go on Facebook and watch it all over again at Anu Adedere. And you can go on Instagram and watch it also in my um, timeline at Anu Adedere. A-A-N-U-A-D-E-D-I-R-E. I, -E. I want to say a big thank you. Thank you for making this year amazing for everybody that likes, that followed, that downloaded my song is love. I want to say a big thank you to everybody. God bless you. The year 2018 will be a year of supernatural turnaround in your life in the name of Jesus. And now we're going to put the show to close. I want to say a big thank you to Amen Radio for also giving us the opportunity and platform to work with them. It's been amazing. 2017 has been an amazing year and I know that 2018 will be bigger and better. Thank you for everyone that joined on Facebook, on Instagram. I want to say a big thank you. God bless you. And this, um, and this year... You haven't seen anything because what God is going to do next year, you will, it will blow your mind. I am very sure it will blow your mind. He said, the thoughts I have towards you are of good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. And you know that one thing God is, God is love. You should love. So I, um, I would say that. And I want to say a big thank you to everyone I met this year. Everyone, everyone. Yes. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm Thelma Benson. God bless you. God bless you. Love you too, sis. For everyone I met this year, for everyone that has been a part of my life this year, for everyone that has has taken their time to watch this show every Wednesday. I say a big thank you to you. God bless you. I'll see you next year in 2018. We shall be bigger. We shall be better. And God has just started with us because he will do greater things in your life. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in today. And thanks for everyone that's listening live in every part of the world you are in. Thank you very, very much. And I pray that the Lord blesses you. So yes, if you want to have watch a recap of this, you can go on my Instagram live, like I said, my Instagram timeline or my Facebook timeline at Anu Adedere. Thank you very much. And God bless you. God be with you in Jesus' name. Amen.